to say that I thought this would be a possibility is a damn lie. <laughs> <laughs> it is just proof of what the power of manifestation and surrender can do. And I think that Jenny is also a walking testimony of what those two things have done for her life and can continue to do for everyone she blesses, you know, with her presence. So I wanted tonight to show you guys that there are so many different ways to process pain, to process things that you go through. And one of the most beautiful, fun ways is through play, through painting and creative expression. And I have had the honor of getting to see that firsthand and experience that with Jenny just a few weeks ago of what just letting go and picking up a paintbrush can do for the mind and the body and the soul. So tonight, um, Jenny is going to share several things here. So she's going to share this beautiful deck, the wisdom of the shadow. Yes. And she's also going to share with you how she has processed pain and not even just pain, joy, so many emotions and uh, through art and through creative expression. So I'm going to open the floor up to her and let her introduce herself and then We'll dive into this juicy topic. I'm so glad you're Yay. here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Leah. And as Leah said, we we just got to paint together uh, like a couple weeks ago uh, at a retreat at Unity Village, and uh, it was just so beautiful and wonderful. And uh, yeah, I just love you. So thank you for having me on here. Um, yeah, it's so nice to meet you all too. My name is Jenny Hahn and I am a painter uh, located here in Kansas City, Missouri. And I've been creating professionally for 20 plus years now. Um, I studied illustration at the Kansas City Art Institute. Uh, but at that time in my life, I actually was looking for um, just a way to heal, really. I was in a really dark place at that time. And I actually found a group who used painting like as a tool for healing, as a tool for self-discovery. And um, I actually have been using painting in that way ever since. And I attended a group for a number of years and now I lead groups. And as Leah, know, as you know, Leah, um, you know, I lead retreats and different uh, workshops and opportunities. Um, because he, painting and creating in general um, is just can be so healing. And I'm not talking about creating to make a piece of work to sell or show somewhere, although you could, but really just engaging our own inner creative spark that we all have because we all do have it. And, uh, you know, painting isn't necessarily everybody's medium of choice, but we can use, if you can pick up a paintbrush, you can paint for process, for self-discovery. And it's just been extremely healing and uh, eye-opening in my own life. And uh, so, you know, the, the card deck that Leah mentioned, um, it actually is comprised of almost 20 years of my own healing art work. <laughs> so about half of the paintings that are in the deck are studio pieces that I've created and shown in public. And uh, Leah, of course, you've been to my studio. And so um, you're familiar with that. But another half of the paintings were basically haven't really been seen by the public up until now. So um, they were created in the way that I'm talking about, which is uh, using art uh, for that process of finding out like what is inside of me that is needing to express like what am I needing a, a, a like an avenue for for expression for healing for that which maybe I've stuffed down that I don't want to look at and we'll get into that more but that's really what the shadow is about is those pieces of ourselves that are unknown that are unexplored and, and uh, that are wanting to be seen and heard. So um, yeah, it's just extremely uh, beneficial, I believe. And so that's one of my passions now is to share uh, creativity with others and encourage, really to encourage creativity in others because so many of us, um, you know, have that, that inner belief that 
I'm not good enough, or I'm not an artist, my sibling was an artist, or I can't even draw a stick figure, you know, all of those things we say, I don't have a creative bone in my body. Um, there's so many ways that that can show up and that that voice of doubt can stop us from ever picking up a paintbrush or a crayon or any <laughs> um, drawing implement, you know, but just sometimes scribbling out or painting out what we're feeling or, you know, that piece, that part of that us that's really a child in a sense, like our inner child, allowing that to express can be one of the most healing and supportive and nurturing experiences that we can provide ourselves and really to provide that integration for all of those shadow aspects that we've been stuffing down and uh, feel like we cannot let out or let uh, be seen. And when we can shine a light on those pieces of ourselves and like start to welcome them to the table, <laughs> to our awareness, like that is where the healing happens. So Leah, do you have questions for me? <laughs> that is so powerful. How did you discover, did you always allow yourself in private to do like process paintings or did you used to try to make them pretty and things that would sell to the public or that were presentable? Like how did you discover that, you know, the healing of process paintings? Yeah, great question. Like that desire for things to be pretty or to look good or to sell, like that is such an ingrained thing that we all like, I think we all go through. And um, so when I first created a lot of those paintings I'm talking about that I that haven't been seen, they were created with the idea that no eyes would ever see them, but mine and the group that was with me at the time. So, so it's a different way and and you know that little voice it, it's it's tricky like it'll sneak up when I'm painting in that way and say "Ooh, this is looking kind of good like this would make a really nice uh you know greeting card or whatever <laughs> like <laughs> you know oh this would make a really nice product of some sort and so that that voice does sneak in and or oh this looks like shit or whatever you know um, I think that's normal. And so really just coming back to that intention and that purity of like, I'm just creating for myself. This doesn't have to see anyone else's eyes unless I choose to share. And that is, that is a really powerful way to, um, you know, a lot of people I know who didn't create or paint before, that's how they discovered like using art for process is that somebody was brave and courageous enough to share their process paintings with them. So that can be in selective ways that can be really powerful, but that's not the main intention for creating in that way. And a lot of people use like, um, you know, an art journal or I'm not, you know, it doesn't have to be large paintings on the wall, but just any, uh, you know, I think of it as like a visual diary in a sense. Um, I am a journaler and so I write a lot. And, and this is like a visual way of approaching, like, again, the inner world, the inner landscape of what is happening, what's showing up for me, and like, what am I just really needing to get out onto the page? And I'm telling you, the page can hold anything. <laughs> like, I've had pieces that are, you know, it doesn't matter how, how they come out. They can be scary. They can be uh, intimidating. Like, uh I've had people say like, are you okay? And uh, you know, that's a pretty violent imagery. And it's like, yeah, I am great. Cause I got it out. I think I mentioned that in the retreat, Leah. It's like, um, yeah, just a it's, my friend calls it verbal vomit uh, when she paints because a lot of words show up and it's like getting that out, getting it onto, getting it out of ourselves. And then, yeah, onto the canvas or the page or whatever is holding it. I love that because that's where, you know, it's very similar to energy healing. It's getting it out of the body. You're not necessarily reliving the trauma. You're letting emotions out of the body that are already in there, that are acting out in other ways, even if you, we don't physically know that or see that, right? Yes. And so I think that's what's so beautiful about just letting it out through a pretty color <laughs> or even a violent color. Like, she, what's she call it? Uh, 
art vomit. Oh, the, the verbal vomit. Yeah. <laughs> verbal vomit. It's just yeah, puke on the page. Yeah. yeah, puke on the page. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it is, it's getting it out because it's in there anyway. And the longer yes. we ignore it, it will eventually turn into things we don't want to experience, such as sickness or depression. So it's so great to just... Right get it out. And sometimes, you know, when you pull out the journal, you might not have the words to say that day. And I love the idea right. that you suggested to doodle. Mm, yes, yes. Well, yeah, working with images is really powerful because they're, they're pre-verbal. And sometimes um, the parts of us that have experienced trauma or um, any kind of hurt, you know, sometimes don't have the words even for it. Like it can be parts of our brain that, uh, you know, is, is more just raw and experiential and, and may not have the verbal language for expressing. And so that's what, and it surprises me sometimes what shows up. Like I, sometimes I don't, I'm not even aware of what is about to show up. And it's amazing how using a tool like this, yeah, it's, it's like, it, it changes over time, like the image will start to shift and it's like, you're just following along for the ride and it's always a journey. It's kind of like dreams, how they kind of shift into different things and you're like, oh, wow, where's this going, you know? Maybe not in the moment, unless you're lucid dreaming, but um, yeah, it's really amazing how, I personally like to use words and images, but yeah, images can really touch something that we may not have the words for, like you said. Yeah. That's beautifully put, Jenny. I want to kind of dive in now to something I'm super excited about. So one of the things that I do for my clients is shadow work. That's a big part of mm -hmm. the things we do together. And so when I pick this up and first of all, I was already hooked because it's you and it's got your artwork, but then who you partnered with, the words that are on these pages are like, Oh my goodness, just to hear these definitions of emotions that so many of us don't understand that have been swept under the rug or not really even taught to us as kids how to process, to hear how you guys have broken them down into definitions and quotes. And then my favorite part, and so many of the other girls who have them already, is the rituals. Yes, like, yes. Yes. Uh, Honey, I've been in the healing industry, I don't know how long. I have never heard these rituals in my life. So I know they are very, mm. they're original, they're raw, and they're actually things you can tell that someone did that helped them through these emotions that, you know, that we may be going through. So when I tell you ladies that this Oracle deck is not like any Oracle deck I've ever used, it's because to me, this one was meant to be done in private. It's literally to give you trying to tell you and instead of running from them it allows you to run into them why they're here i think you were freezing up for just a minute leah oh that's okay you're back. i was spitting so much fire okay so what it does is it allows you to come to terms with the shadow Yes. and dive into the shadow and see why it's here so that it no longer remains mm. a shadow and return it becomes a reflection of your light yes yes absolutely so, yeah yeah go on so, go on no that's okay I'm just so excited for them to see this but seriously you guys these rituals I I just can't get over them and the combo with like my one of my best friends Julie said this last night she was going through your deck and she said I feel like almost wrong in a way when I pick up Jenny's art because it's like I'm seeing into her her diary it's so raw mm. it's so real and this artwork is just beautiful so I'm going to let you dive Thank into you. kind of how this came about and show them some of these process pieces and explain yeah. to them what shadow the wisdom of the shadow means to you and what shadow work means to you Yes, great. Um, yeah, so Leah, you mentioned like, so I want to give a huge shout out to uh, my soul sister and partner, Jessica Ricchetti, who wrote the, basically the book for the, for this card set and 
and brought in, and she wrote the whole thing so uh, ritual, like, um, what's the word, ceremonially. And we've heard this from other people too, that that they, they've never experienced the rituals before, like as part of an Oracle deck. So we're super excited about that. Um, you know, that was an interesting story, like how this all came to be. Um, I've known for many years that I wanted to use my work on some sort of card deck, but I really didn't know, like I am, I'm, I haven't used, like I'm not a huge Oracle card user per se. Like I didn't have as, a, a lot of experience with how that would look and how it would work. I just knew it was something I wanted to do. And I think it was about, it was in 2019, um, I had decided that I was really in my studio work, I was gonna start listening to my inner voice and my intuition when it came to how to promote my work and how I was going to, what shows I was gonna apply to and how I was gonna put myself out there. And something really magical happened because I got a strong intuitive hit to go to this event, this women's conference in Sedona, Arizona that year, the spring of 2019. And I loaded up my entire car a whole bunch of paintings, all these display, art walls, everything. I loaded the car up. My partner and I drove across the country. It's a pretty long drive from Kansas City to Sedona. So um, it was a big risk that I took. And, uh, you know, we got all the way out there and, and I sold some art. I didn't sell a lot of art. <laughs> I didn't even break even. And so, you know, in, in my mind, I'm thinking, what am I doing here? Like, I got such a strong hit, I needed to be here. And um, the, the answer now that is perfectly clear to me is that that is where I met Jessica Ricchetti. And that is where the, the birth of this deck really happened um, because we were discussing there, she just immediately fell in love with my art. I was carrying in a almost life-size painting in through the doors setting up and she just was stopped in her tracks and just said, that is my soul there and in this piece. And so we had a magical conversation and basically said, yeah, we wanna create Oracle cards together. And she um, is a priestess, she is a, a energy alchemist, a ritualist, and so she, is steeped in this work of using uh, using oracle cards, using uh, different forms of healing, and just um, so she lives in uh, Asheville, North Carolina, and so we both had like traveled to this place uh, to be a part of this event, which the event was you know it was all right, but we got to meet each other, and that really sparked and started all of this. So um, we it was about I don't know probably nine months or so, of course, of, um, you know, the planning and the bringing this together, the designing, the, um, you know, curating which pieces, oops, my ear, sorry, one of my headphones just dropped out. Um, <laughs> curating, sorry, curating which pieces to use, um, what words we wanted to use. So, Jessica also is very familiar with shadow work and works that with her clients. And I, of course, you know, with all the process paintings I've done, like shadow work is so important to me. Um, you know, the, 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 the term shadow is really coined by Carl Jung, you know, uh, a psychological term of we're not talking about like things that are quote bad or evil or anything like that. Again, it comes down to what is unknown, what is covered within us, what is repressed within us. And so it's these aspects of ourself, of our own being, that for whatever reason, we felt the need to cover and to hide away. And so this uh, card deck set is really a tool for that, for that self-discovery, for that soul work, for really for leading to transformation and integration of those aspects. And so, um, yeah, it was just such a, a beautiful process and co-creation of how it all came to be. And uh, we just had our Kickstarter launch last fall and um, we had double, we raised double our goal. <laughs> and so it was just incredible. We actually got to have, do some really cool upgrades. Um, the box, like 
originally it was going to be like a like a, a um, I forget what you call it, like a lid that lifts off. But we got to upgrade to this beautiful clamshell, a magnetic opening of the box. There's a blessing uh, when you open it up. I've taken everything apart right now. So um, the cards themselves, like um, we upgraded to some magnet, the like. Uh, not magnetic, what's the word, metallic, <laughs> metallic edging on the cards. So they're just this beautiful, um, thick um, card stock, which is kind of a mat, like it's soft, like it feels good in the hands. Um, they glide, but they don't stick together or glide too much where they fall off of each other. Um, it just, yeah, they just feel really good in the hands. And then the book, um, yeah, it just, it all, like fits together perfectly in this beautiful box. And there's kind of this ribbon to help get the cards out. And then the book just fits in the tray. And yeah, we designed the book so that each word or core essence gets its own spread. And so you've got the image of the art, you've got the word in this case, um, fear, and then you've got the title of the painting that's used. And then um, there's an affirmation right away. And then Jessica has done a transmission of the painting, which is kind of like the feel, the feel of the painting. And then it goes immediately into uh, just talking about that core essence, uh, talking about fear. And then it goes into uh, things to consider as you experience, you know, what does this feel like for you? And then each word has a contemplation section. So there's several questions here to uh, consider. You can write about or take into meditation. And then of course, as you said, Leah, the ritual, which is kind of the, the gold <laughs> of each, uh, each spread here. Um, because these rituals are so amazing. Like this is not just about reading about these core essences, it's how can they be embodied? How can they be integrated? And so I'm just super excited about that. And I, like I said, I didn't realize that other oracles didn't even, don't really usually touch on that. And we've gotten so much feedback, like amazing feedback. And people are just really loving those rituals. So yeah. I'm yeah, so when I took the, I am too. And when I typically use an oracle deck, you know, your oracle decks are normally a theme. And a lot of times in Oracle deck, I always tease people. I say it's like the super sweet sister, like tarot's kind of the cutthroat um, and, and has no filter, right? And Oracle is normally like a positive affirmation and everything's going to be okay. Um, and it's a butterfly theme or an angel theme or a mermaid right. theme. <laughs> and so when I opened these, I was like, oh shit, Jenny wasn't playing. <laughs> like. <laughs> Woo! And I was like, okay. And so every morning yeah. what I do in my meditation time to myself is I pull one of these and mm -hmm. I just, and sometimes I'll use it as a journal prompt or I'll use it as my affirmation for the day. Um, but, and then I know that I'm going to either try to do the ritual then or come back and do it that night. But yeah, they, they are just beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, um, we've had like, a lot of con like a lot of feedback coming in and just a lot of people saying like, these cards are on fire. Right. <laughs> but I love like, you know, there's just a lot of color and a lot of texture, even just when you see the spread. And, uh, you know, yeah, there's just a lot of variety on, on the different cards. So yeah, like some like, yeah, like here's a process painting, like, nobody had ever seen this before ever, you know, like I created this, this one is for authenticity, but like, this is some really like deep inner stuff going on here with my own, like allowing myself to be seen, allowing the shadow to be seen. And so, you know, and some are, are less like some, I mean, this is another process painting, but um, yeah, this, this is fun because this is the one that has an expletive in the, <laughs> But boundaries, I mean, this is, <laughs> this is stuff I've been working with for years, you know, of like owning my voice and, and what, you know, being able to set boundaries, like how many of us are, are struggling with that, right? Like um, working with my own anger, like here's the card for rage. I mean, 
This is one I, nobody had ever seen this before. I was never planning to share this, but like, um, you know, being able to to uh, to access and express my anger in healthy ways. I, you know, I grew up like a good girl, right? Like I was not supposed to be feeling anger, <laughs> certainly not expressing it. And so that actually manifested as an eating disorder for me and just uh, some really self-destructive uh, behaviors. And so being able to tap our anger and express it, not like lashing out on someone, but like to express it in paint. I mean, that's, that's huge. That's really big. This, this painting here, um, you know, this, this I created um, a lot around my own inner perfectionism and kind of that voice that's always pushing me, pushing me, pushing me. So um, this card is expectations. Um, so yeah, some of them have words in them, some, some don't, but, um, and then other pieces are, like I said, some of my studio work that Leah, you probably saw this piece when you came to my studio. <laughs> this one uh, was called Healing Hearts, but uh, yeah, this card is resilience. And um, yeah, just the energy of that, when our heart breaks and breaks open, you know, and we go from that hard holding to like that expansiveness, you know? So it's, so it's not all like the quote negative <laughs> aspects and emotions in here, you know? There's some really positive, like, you know, rising, I love like the, that the one. phoenix, you know, yeah, the overcoming, um, the surrender of letting go. And you There's know, that's just, my favorite painting of yours. Is that your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> that's the one I said, I'm going to own one of her pieces one day. That was the one. Can you show them that one more time? That's oh, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yes. was the one that I got so emotional because just like um, yeah. your friend said, I felt so understood through that piece. Mm. I felt like everything that I had held in all my life was finally seen. And mm. that's how I knew right then I was like, this woman, there is something so different about her art. And mm. I just knew that I needed it. But to see it and to be able to touch it is an even more fascinating experience. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, to have 44 pieces in one. <laughs> <laughs> in one box it's like yeah yeah and to have this combination of like yeah the studio work and then the yeah the really raw you know like process work I mean these were all originally tempera paint on paper and again just done for for my own self-awareness and so yeah it feels so amazing to be able to share this now like it's like, what do we do when we when we work through something and we process something? It's like, okay, we can move on, but it's like, you know, what if, what if 20 years of 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 self awareness and healing work could become a product, you know, that could then go on and hopefully bless others or help others in whatever way. Um, I just, you know, I was thinking if I had something like this when I was going through, um, difficult times like how cool is that um just to to have uh you know when i've seen other people's process work it's like it, it really hit me it's like this is so raw like you said leah like so raw and uh you know we don't always get to see inside people's souls quite like that so um yeah yeah it's just pretty pretty magical it really is and this one I yeah. mean, <laughs> you see that, and like I said, you just feel so understood. And mm -hmm. you see these and you go, wow, I would look at that and I would actually really understand what she means by dependency by just looking at that image. Mm -hmm. um, so when, when we go through your deck, do you want to pick out a couple more pieces that are your, when you see them, it's still almost like, hits you right in the throat chakra like it was that raw and then we'll have you read a couple if you want to for the group sure yeah oh my gosh um <laughs> there's a couple that I'm thinking of that are um well here we go okay I'm gonna share this one um because 
again, never thought anyone in the world would ever see this, but this, it, this card is vulnerability. And in the image, you can see there's kind of this mouth wide open and there's this kind of older woman face inside. And here you can see these hooks kind of just pulling open the chest and in it, you see this fist um, that's like, you know, persisting, not giving up. And uh, there's, it's hard to see cause it's a little dark but there's eyes, there's eyes all around here and there's a lot of tears uh, coming down. And so, yeah, this was a, this was a really uh, vulnerable <laughs> piece for me to do. And uh, I would love to just read, let's see. I'll read as if we just pulled that card because we did. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> and that goes hand in hand. Somebody just said, how do I use Oracle cards? Ah, so that's great. what she's doing right Question. now. <laughs> yes. So, so I'll just, let me start off by saying that, um, you know, with that card, uh, uh, one way that a lot of people will use it is to just kind of, you can kind of shuffle the cards. Um, and I don't mean like a real, you know, shuffling like you would with playing cards, but just kind of like this. And then some people will do like a spread and then say, what, you know, what card are you drawn to right now? And of course these are all, uh, you know, bottom side up right now. And, and just, so whatever card you're drawn to pulling that card and then seeing the image. And you can start by just taking in the image and the word and what does that mean to you right now? Some people like to go into it with a certain intention, like, um, you know, I'm feeling kind of stuck right now, or um, I'm uncertain about something, a question I have on my mind, something like that. Um, so you can always bring that intention before you do a spread and pull a card. And in the book, there's actually some really cool, Jessica has included different types of card spreads you can do. And so you don't have to just pull one card, you could pull um, three cards and put them in a certain order or uh, here five cards, um, an alchemical spread of five cards. And so it literally would say like what each card, you know, there's a main core essence and then there's a support one, the shadow beneath the shadow, previously expressed, potential to express, so there's all these different ways, and this book explains a lot of different ways to use Oracle cards. But the simplest way I do is just to pull a card, you know, see how it feels for me, and then you can reference the book. So all the words uh, are in alphabetical order. So I'm just gonna go to the spread for vulnerability. And we can see there's that image again in black and white. And so, and then the art, it says exposed fist <laughs> was the name of it. And the affirmation is, I am brave in the expression of my full truth. I see the gifts of standing in my vulnerability. And so the transmission part here, it says, uh, and this is where Jessica is kind of describing the feel of this painting. Heart peeled back, wide open, exposed, uncertain, scared, calling out to be seen and heard, empowered and sad, trying and tired, fear and fighting, truth and wholeness, screaming and stillness, trusting and questioning, willing. So the, the writing uh, on the page now is, vulnerability can feel risky. We are exposing our hearts and opening to possibilities of rejection, hurt, abandonment, or being seen in a way that isn't desirable. When we can connect with others on real, human, messy, flawed levels in the world of values infallibility, the connections feel more nourishing and meaningful. We can only do that with a willingness to bear it all emotionally with full authenticity without being frozen in fear of what others will think. So I invite you to just take in all these words as I'm reading, like whatever is up for you right now, like just let this fill you up. <laughs> if we stuff down what wants to be expressed, we can get caught in spirals of self-isolation, shame, doubt, insecurity, or overthinking. Vulnerability is a radical act. Our weaknesses and faults are what make us human. The world that has been created around us that values an image of perfection without wavering 
is in need of realness and a return to vulnerable true expression. We are seeing this happen collectively. Women reclaiming gray hair and unmade faces, ads showing wider ranges of age, bodies, and skin, and more truths about emotion, mental health, and real life challenges being shared socially. More realness, please. It is okay to be human, to have emotion, to have flaws, to have fears, and it is okay to share all of that. In fact, here is your permission slip. Invite yourself to be you in all the truth, wildness, uniqueness that you are. Share it with others. And here are the contemplations. So I invite you to just hold these questions in your heart and you can even write about them if you feel so led. The question, the contemplations are, what layers of vulnerability would feel good to share? How do I, how do I, how do I feel hearing others share relatable vulnerabilities? And how can I create safer spaces to share more vulnerably. So here is the, um, the ritual, and this is something that you can do if you would like to put this card into practice. Practice vulnerability by speaking truths to yourself that you feel are challenging to share. Sit in front of a mirror and speak five things out loud that feel true to you but feel a bit too vulnerable to share with others. So five things. Uh, hold, your share, hold your share gently without judgment or feedback. To speak things out loud to ourselves and release them from our body enables us to express them to others. Then reach out to someone close to you who will also hold your share without judgment. Share two, three, or all of the vulnerable truths with them. So starting by speaking them out loud to ourselves in the mirror, and then if it feels safe to do so, beginning to share those one or two or three or all five vulnerabilities with uh, a trusted person. And maybe that trusted person would be like your teddy bear or your <laughs> an image on the wall or something, but begin beginning to speak them out to get them out into the world. Do you all see why I love this deck? So Amberly said, this card at this stage in my life hits me with all the feels. Yes. Mm. PJ said, this is so inspiring. Lulu said, yes. Yeah. So you've got a lot of people that love this. Amberly said, this is a lovely presentation, meaning I think your, your deck. Um, Laura made a comment about how she absolutely loves the cards and that they're beautiful. She owns the deck. Mm. Yay. Courtney, <laughs> Courtney <laughs> said, I was more creative when I was happy, but now I sit in front of a canvas and nothing happens. Any advice? Oh, yes. Yes, I do have some advice. <laughs> My advice when we get that frozen feel in front of the blank canvas and, and, and well, let me just start by saying, just start moving, like make the, back to the scribble idea. Just start with a scribble. If we're working in acrylics or tempera paints, something that's water-based like that, we can do as many layers as we want. Like they dry quickly, you know? If you're too afraid to start with the canvas, go get a scrap piece of paper and get a Sharpie marker or a pencil or something and just start scribbling on that. But just to get things moving, because we can get so frozen in fear, like fear of messing it up, fear of, oh my God, this is my one chance here. I've got to express all my truth perfectly, <laughs> you know? But for me, when I create for process, like it's not my mind that is actually doing the expressing. Like if I have an idea in my head of, okay, I could make something flaming up and this flying out and, you know, it's like, no, it doesn't actually work that way for me. It starts by moving, seeing how my body wants to move, what color I'm drawn to in this moment, and then trusting and seeing what wants to happen next. And so we don't actually pre-plan it, but the, the act of moving the body and breathing and feeling the body as we're doing it, it will actually unfold in its own way over time. 
And that takes a lot of trust. Like that can be really scary. I get that. <laughs> so, um, you know, one thing that helps me is if I have multiple canvases available and, and I know that, you know, this, there's a cost issue with this, but sometimes like certain, you know, at craft stores, you can get like a 10 pack of canvases, um, you know, for fairly reasonable, uh, or even if it's just like a ream of, of thick cardstock paper, like a ream of, pa of printer paper for like, five or ten dollars you know you've got like a couple hundred pieces of paper in there so just giving ourselves permission to make a mess um i uh i don't know if it, uh you know if we're using ex expletives on here or not leah but <laughs> i had an art teacher who used to uh, say oh fuck you know, yeah <laughs> I, okay good i'm like my <laughs> art teacher used to say her secret was fuck it up fast <laughs> and so I actually use that in, I keep that in my head. Like when I'm afraid to start, it's like, fuck it up fast. Cause as soon as you ruin it, it's like, you are then free to do the painting that wants to happen when we can get out of our own way, get out of our heads. And, um, you know, I, when I paint, I paint layer upon layer and, um, it, it's so funny how freeing it can feel when we're no longer attached to it. Like when I actually don't like my piece anymore, there's almost a freedom in that of, well, like I can't make it any worse now, you know? So like, what would I do now? And um, there can be almost a playfulness of, um, you know, how, just how bad can I make it? Like, how can I make this worse, you know? Or what's the most, um, what's the most radical thing I could do right now in my piece? Uh, and, you know, that can be a really fun thing to play with. So yeah, anytime we get stuck in that perfectionistic mindset, it's like, just fuck it up fast, scribble, do whatever one needs to go, do the verbal vomit, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Why do I feel like I had that motto in my life without meeting her? <laughs> <laughs> I was fucking shit up fast. No, um, I will say another thing that Jenny taught me um, last time I was, or the time I was at her workshop, is she had beautiful music playing that had almost like drumming beats and different beats to it. And yeah. none of us set out with our pieces with um, a mindset necessarily of what we were gonna paint. We just went went for it. And yeah. as I was painting, and I am not a painter, but that day I felt like Picasso. I had my eyes closed and I let my hips move and I just mm -hmm. felt the way each stroke felt. And I didn't care, honestly, what it looked like. And yeah. one of the things that um, Jenny did say to someone and I overheard, which I thought was so powerful, she didn't come over and critique our art or um, necessarily really give her opinion. But one thing she did say to a woman, she said, where are you in this piece? Mm. And so yeah. I think that is just a beautiful advice too. you know, find where you are in that moment and make that your piece. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for, for bringing that up, Leah. And um, yeah, it's, you know, that retreat that we were at, that was called Awakening the Queen Retreat with Rima Bonario. Amazing. And, and, and we, weren't, we weren't painting our inner queen in any way. We were painting as the queen. Like yes. the, page, the page is your, your free reign, like your, your queendom. It's like we have full sovereignty as creative beings and you can do anything you want on the page or on the canvas or whatever your medium is. So that is where there are no rules and there are no mistakes either. If you're painting for you and not for anyone else's eyes, it's like anything can happen. Anything at all can happen. And another good piece of advice that somebody told me once, and I think I shared it at that retreat too, Leah, is um, don't paint from your head, paint from your yoni. <laughs> yes, your creative yeah. palace. That is your creative kingdom, queendom. Yes, 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 it is. Yes, your womb space, whether or not you have a physical womb, doesn't matter. Like our creative, you know, second chakra, like that is where creative, everybody thinks it's up here, you know, and they're like, you know, their hand is relaying what's going on up here. And it's not like in this case, that is not, I don't feel that that's the way that it really is 
from the body out. And I love Leah that you were saying like you're moving your hips, like, yeah, moving the body. It's the body that paints, it's the body that creates. So inviting the body is really important. <laughs> it is. And yeah. you know, I find that when I allow myself to be creative, whether it's through dancing, moving, painting, um, creating food in the kitchen, my manifestation and the things I'm able to manifest blow me away when I'm in a creative state. Have you noticed that in your life that, you know, the more and more time that you spend creating, how easy it is for you to create a manifestation like that? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Because when we are, cre when we're like tapping our creative flow, um, it, it has, it, that is an energy and a practice that can be applied to life. It doesn't matter whether we have art materials in hand or not. Like you said, if you're cooking, if you're like even down to like the decisions we make throughout the day, what we choose to wear each day, like, you know, um, every word that comes out of our mouths, like that is an expression. And the more we trust, the more we trust our own creativity, the more we can trust our intuition and our own flow. And that is where the magic happens in life. Because again, it's like not just listening to the head, the mind, the logical mind, but it's like the inner knowing of the body. It's just amazing what can happen. It's like with the story with taking me to Sedona, Arizona so that I can meet Jessica. It's like, you know, it's a, we can't like pre-plan those things. They just happen. And so um, it's really beautiful how it's like we draw those opportunities to us instead of having to make them happen out in the world. It's like um, being in our own creative flow draws to us that which we are aligned with. And, and I've, you know, I've really struggled a lot with like, I'm, I'm still trying to get this one because I am so used to this more like in the world, we're taught like this masculine way, right? Of, of kind of like, achieving and making these happen and, and this in and, and more of a linear way. And it's like, this is so magical to like actually trust the process and trust our bodies and then open to the universe. I mean, I know that you talk about this all the time, Leah, this is your jam, <laughs> but like, it's, a, it's magical when it happens. It's like, even like meeting you, it's like these connections happen and then there's, it's like bigger and better than you can ever like plan out. So yeah, I think it's just amazing when we can learn to trust that. I agree. And I think as we said earlier, you know, creativity is very much a form of moving energy. So you're moving it out yes. the body. And the more you move things out of your body, the, mo the more you more, the more you move things out of your mind as well, you, mm. you allow room for things to come in and yes. make the space and i think that's what also makes the manifestation really start to you know just attach itself to you because you actually have an open space now to receive it yes yes and, and one of the things i wanted to say um is for anyone who has experienced sexual trauma or you find yourself um not being able to express yourself sexually being able to paint from the womb space and create from the womb space allows the womb to have a voice. And so many of us who have went through any kind of sexual trauma, that voice was suppressed for years. When you find yourself painting or drawing or creating, as silly as it sounds, it almost is like a hug for the yoni. She feels safe to come out. And I think if you've went through that, these, these process paintings, would be perfect for you to not necessarily have to tell a soul to not have to relive it but to just close your eyes and let the yoni have its voice through the paintbrush beautifully put yes leah that is so beautifully put and yeah it's um you know my teacher used to say like if there was a part of the body um like for me if it was my gut you know she used to say to me like um uh, if you hand the paintbrush over to your gut, you know, what does your gut want to paint? And so I love how you put that, Leah, like, yeah, if your Yoni could paint, what does she have to say? Like what, it's such a, you know, it's, it's such a powerful 
practice because we, especially, um, yeah, whether we're talking about trauma, sexual trauma or pain in the body, in our culture, it's almost like we, we shut off from the body. Like we try to control it. We try to medicate it. We try to, um, you know, like almost like it's a separate thing. And so, but there is a wisdom, there is a wisdom in every cell of our bodies. So to allow that to express is just so powerful. And, and the healing that can happen is like more than, it, it, you know, more than any, like taking a medicine or numbing out. It's like, really from the inside out expressing. And yeah, you, you said that so beautifully. It's, it's yeah, really transformative. Thank you. Yeah. It truly, truly is. So I want to invite you guys, you know, Jenny was mentioning this earlier. I go to Ross um, and uh, Ross has like those packages of canvases you were talking uh -huh. about you can get them for like yeah. five dollars I think there's five of them though they're like five canvases for five bucks and they have all yeah. kinds of watercolors and every kind of paint that you can think of for dirt cheap nice so I, I didn't yeah, even so know I, that that Ross had that <laughs> yeah so nice I, I can't even explain how much I bought for one of my girlfriend's birthday parties it's like two massive bags and it was less than I think it's like 40 50 dollars and it will last for a really long time and that nice. was paint brushes and and all kinds of stuff but yeah just start to come up with a creative corner in your house or your space where this is where you connect back to you through creation and see what it does for you. Make it a family event, you know, um, make it a girl's night out. It's, it's, it was so fun watching all these beautiful women of all walks of life at the workshop and how their inner children were coming out and the joy on their faces. So many of them said, wow, I, I just didn't realize how good it felt <laughs> to paint. And they yes. were all so excited to do it with her again. It was just the simplicity of allowing yourself to be a kid again. Yes, absolutely. And, and yeah, and part of that is just allowing the inner critic to just go have a seat somewhere else because that inner child in us, like it knows, it knows what feels good to do. And so when we can get out of our own ways, it's like, that is always there. It's always available. And yeah, thank you for mentioning that about creating a, a creative space or corner or wall or whatever, you know, door frame. <laughs> you don't yeah, have to have a whole room or a studio. No. It's like, there's so many ways to set up an area in our homes and then just, or maybe it's just like a, a like I said, an a art basket. journal on your nightstand. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. like a basket. I love it. <laughs> the art supply basket. <laughs> That's what mine is. It's got a bunch of mason jars yeah. that have a bunch of shit in it. Like some yeah. days I want to create with buttons. And one of my Ooh. best friends, Holly, is on here and she's also an artist. And she has, uh, what she'll do is she'll take like an old, an old painting that she's done. Uh -huh. And then she'll go and she'll just paint white over it. Uh -huh. sometimes and she'll just use it again and she yes. uses it again and yes. she'll collect like uh newspapers or like uh blueprints of things and crumble them up and glue them on you know a canvas and stuff so yeah just nice. pick what you can and put it in your creative corner yes I love that and I love you know that you reminded me that uh one thing I've done with pieces that I don't particularly like anymore or whatever I've, I've lost interest in them it's like to go back and like you said, to either gesso over or paint with white paint over it. And sometimes I've actually ripped up pieces that I've done in the past that I wasn't loving. And it's like, turn that into a collage and glue that down onto the, you know, it's like, it's just that recycling aspect. It's like, you can just keep going with it, you know, like, and that takes away the preciousness also of like, oh, I don't want to ruin it. I mean, it's like <laughs> ruin it intentionally. <laughs> yeah. What'd you say? Not fuck it up. What did you say earlier? Fuck it up fast. <laughs> fuck it up fast. <laughs> fuck it up fast. And then it becomes so fun, you know? <laughs> yes. All the Fs. <laughs> That's why you did it too. <laughs> So we have a couple more questions and I'll want to be mindful of your time. But yeah. um, Amber Lee said, I have a hard time not letting my lines and blends be messy. I need to work on not being perfect. I think that's so common mm -hmm. if you want to tap into that one. I think you kind of did a little bit. 
Yeah, you know, I, um, my suggestion might be for something like that, because um, sometimes if we're working with pencil or something where not lines are really crisp or definitive, it's like, I don't know um, if you've ever worked with watercolors or something like that, where a medium where it intentionally is, is, is like, you can't control it. <laughs> I mean, some people can control it, but like, to me, watercolors are just flowy and, and they're not about control. And also tempera paints, which we used in the workshop is similar. It's like, there's a flow to it and, and not necessarily the precision of like the line. So um, you might wanna try that. Um, sorry, was it Amber? I think you said that asked that question. Um, might wanna try exploring with watercolors and you can get them like from the dollar store too. I believe just a set of like a small set of watercolors or, or temper paints, something like that, poster paints, you know, um, that would be my suggestion uh, if, if there's like that need to want to control the crisp line is just to get away from lines altogether for a while. I love that. You've got so many people loving that fuck it up fast. Speaking of <laughs> the other artist, huh? she said, I love that fuck it up fast. It gets rid of all the pressure. It's yes. crazy the amount of pressure we put on ourselves, oh even my with mine. Oh yeah. I still do. I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah, that's a tough one. So yeah, that's a good, good reminder and really bringing it to that place of play. Yes. Huge. Yes. Yeah. Holly said, I am so happy that I tuned into this. I needed to hear all of it. Thank you, Jenny. Yay, Holly. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Lotus said, thank you for all the great information. You express and explain things very well. Yes, she does. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Amber Lee said, thank you. I will play with them. Awesome. So all perfect. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jenny, so go ahead. I, I put a link in the comments for, uh, for your Oracle deck, but feel free to tell these lovely ladies how they can work with you, how they can follow you, um, and what your upcoming workshops are. But I do want to plug something that I thought, if you don't love Jenny now, you're going to love her or I should say, if you love Jenny now, <laughs> you're going to love her even more. And if you don't love Jenny, you can leave. No, I'm just kidding. Because <laughs> you're fucking shit up fast in the wrong way. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I saw this, what Jenny posted the other day, and it just, it, it uh, brought tears to my eyes, how beautiful she is. So Jenny has a belief that everyone should be able to afford art. So she does something that I've never heard of another artist doing, and she offers payment plans this whole time for seven years. I thought, <laughs> someday I'm going to own her piece. And now <laughs> I just learned from Jenny that I can. So Jenny, you want to also explain a little bit about that too for your um, larger commission pieces as a, or your pieces in general as opposed to just your Oracle deck? And then I'll let yeah. you tell them how they can work with you. Thank you, Leah. Yeah, my website is jennyhonart.com. Um, Hon is H A H N, jennyhonart.com. And so I, yeah, I, my paintings, uh, you know, most of my original paintings are like huge, <laughs> like three feet by four feet. So it's so um, cool to see them now as the little tiny oracle cards. But um, I paint on canvas and on medium density fiberboard, so on wood basically. But I have, you know, I have a pretty large collection of, of pieces that, um, yeah, I sell my work through my website and through my, I had a studio, I just got rid of it. So I'm working from home now, but I have a home studio here. Um, but yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that, Leah, because um, especially during the pandemic, like, I just, I, I know that a lot of folks are struggling, like with, uh, you know, some people have lost their jobs, some people income has been sporadic, I know for me it has, and, um, but I do have a belief that everybody deserves to have original art in their homes, like, um, you know, not even just prints, but like an original piece. I think that's really important, and I've been fortunate to be able to trade with other artists and uh, even to purchase things at times, and uh, so I actually decided I had already taken like payment plans before, but I um, extended it to up to a year. So I've got some people who are literally paying just every month 
uh, for a year, just whatever amount is comfortable to them. And so any original I do this with, it doesn't matter how small the painting is. So, um, and also if I know you or I know of you or I'm somehow connected to you on Facebook or wherever, um, I, I am fine with you taking the piece like as soon as you've made your first payment. So that is pretty unheard of. A lot of galleries will do payment plans, but they make you pay the whole thing first, which is understandable. But um, like I said, if I have some sort of connection to you and I know where to find you, like, um, yeah, take the piece with you, enjoy it. And just, yeah, I enjoy the money that keeps coming in that literally like pays my bills and pays for my food. So I'm just so grateful for that. And um, I also do have prints on my website. Um, those are not <laughs> through the payment plans. Those are, you pay them all at once, but um, you can order prints like from, you know, five by seven sized up to any size. And the cool thing about prints are that you can order prints of paintings of mine that have already sold. So if I don't have the original anymore, like the one that you mentioned, Leah, Surrender, that painting earlier, like I don't own the original anymore, but you can order prints of it uh, through the website, through jennyhonart.com. And on the website, it's cool because you can even preview like what it would, what size would look like on your wall. Um, there's all kinds of cool like uh, tools for that to help you visualize like what size do you want? They have like, there's framing options on there, things like that. So, um, and then of course, there's the Oracle decks and art pendants, you know, things you can wear, all kinds of other um, products that are available there. So, and um, let's see, you also asked about uh, workshop opportunities, Leah, and um, I have yet another website. I don't want to overwhelm you with web URLs. <laughs> but... No, I put them all in there, so you're good. Oh, you did? Okay. The Creative Nectar Studio. Yay, that's what okay. I was just going to mention. <laughs> yes, thank you. So they all are linked through my website, but if you want to get really deep into the process art world, Creative Nectar Studio is the web, creativenectarstudio.com is my website. And also my other um, partner and soul sister, Stephanie Gray, um, we both offer workshops. She does a lot online uh, and one-on-one. -on -one, and so there's uh, lots of opportunities there. I still need to update my, my schedule on that. But um, we both have blogged and written about like this process again, like our own very personal uh, journeys with healing, with dealing with pain, with dealing with all sorts of emotions. And so, yes, please check out creativenectarstudio.com for all of that fun stuff. And then, of course, there is the deck, so which you can get at wisdomoftheshadow.com. And, or it's also linked through my website, but uh, yes. yeah. And I have it as a pinned comment if you guys want to order and Holly just ordered. <laughs> I mean, it really is, you know, to be honest, like, I, I mean, that's, that's your artwork at barely a dollar, right? Per piece. I mean, that you're is, right. You're right. It is. That's a yeah. Steal. Yeah, thirty nine ninety five for the deck for an indie deck. Um, that is a steal. Like we, you know, we this is self published. This is although you wouldn't know it by looking at it. I mean, this is really just a, an amazingly beautiful um, product. Like even the printing, I'm just so happy about it. So yeah, think of it as getting a painting for a dollar. I love that forty four yeah. cards. So yeah, yeah. and you can put them in. Yeah, in little frames if you wanted you to. You can. And you know what's so funny? My my partner, Jerry, he found you can get these little, <laughs> I didn't know it wasn't made for this, but one day I came down and he had a bunch of my cards in these little, they're like little round um, with a little slit in it. It's like these little, what do you call it? Um, like say at a wedding or a dinner party when you have like name oh, tags. Oh, a place. A, yeah, like, like a, a place, what do you call a those? placeholder. A a name holder. I can't think a of it. Yeah, like a name holder. And it's like, oh my gosh, that's brilliant. Like, you you know, he had a bunch of the cards displayed that way. So there's a lot of ways to have this work surrounding you. There really is. Well, Jenny, I just wanted to thank you again for this beautiful opportunity and for willing to share your story and your vulnerability and to just remind everybody to just play. Thank you. Thank you, Leah. It is su it's such an honor to be here and in your group. And I just, I love you. I adore you. And I am so glad that we got to connect again. Like, 
Yeah, that even in and of itself is an amazing story. But I know you've already shared that here so uh, previously. But just yeah, I'm so glad that you we reconnected at the retreat and you're yeah. just uh, beautiful and amazing. So thank you. I think the same of <laughs> you. I still keep pinching myself. <laughs> is Jenny Han really here? <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness but what is even you know your artwork is beautiful but to be honest Jenny it's you I mean you are beautiful mm -hmm. and you really remind everybody to just get raw to get dirty and to just get back to who they are yes beautifully put yes 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 to that I love you honey thank you for spreading I your love light you, Leah. Mm -hmm. until the next time yes I don't want to let you thank go. You, thank you. <laughs> Until next time. <laughs> Until next time. Bye, Jenny. Bye, everyone. Right. Thank you Bye, for everyone. In. Have a great night. Bye. Bye.